Okay, hi AP Chemistry class. This is um, your lesson for uh, Thursday, September the 19th. Uh, I inadvertently did not change the dates from my spring class. So it's Thursday, September 19th, Friday, September 20th. And in class we read the notes and went over the example problem. I'm going to push ahead and I'm going to go to problem number one. And we're going to walk through that together. Um, I may just do a couple of problems on this video. I'm having some problems with my software. It's been crashing on me, so I want to be sure I get you at least a couple of problems, and then I'll go back and do another video with the uh, remainder of the problems. What I'd like you to try to do, do at least the first three problems, and I'm going to give you time in class tomorrow to do the remainder of the problems, okay? All right, so let's look at what this little diagram is trying to, this visual is saying, is that out here that's, uh, is our world, okay? That's the little people here represent. It's the world we live in. We can measure things on a scale in grams. We can take any of these substances up here and measure them in grams. But the chemical equation speaks in the language of moles. This is two moles, one mole, one mole, one mole. Or even more precisely, what this means is however you need twice as many moles of silver as you have moles of this substance, this substance, or this substance. So it's a relationship. Um, of how much you need of each substance in relation to the others. So that's the language of the chemical equation. In other words, we can't count moles. We know what a mole is, but we can't count 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. So therefore, um, we have to have another way to get there. And that way that translates for us is the molar mass. And simply what you do is, on this line, is you take one mole of whatever the substance is. Okay, don't multiply it by two. That's Don't make that mistake. It's one mole of silver is 107.9. One mole of hydrogen sulfide is 34.09 and so forth. You just take one mole of each of the compounds and you put it in this box and that becomes your translator. It gives you a connection between moles and grams. Grams is what we can deal with out here. Moles is what the chemical equation deals with. Okay, so how do we solve these problems? Well, you're going to start with two things. You're going to start with something that the problem is saying you're looking for, and then you're going to start with an amount of something that it gives you to start with. So let's read the first question. How many moles of H2S are required to produce 3.5 moles of Ag2S? So what the question is asking us for is moles of H2S. So first of all, find H2S. And then H2S has two boxes, one for moles, one for grams. So the one we're interested in is moles of HGS, and we're trying to find that out. So we're going to put a little question mark there. Now it says it's required to produce 3.5 moles of AG, uh, AG2S. So we come over here, there's AG2S, and there's the moles box for AG2S. So we can go ahead and write 3.5 inside of that. So basically we're just trying to get from here to here. It's just a simple transition. So to do that we have to know the relationship between how many moles of AGS, AG2S, is equal to, to how many moles of H2S. And we see it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So that's about as easy a problem as we can have. So what you do with your unknown, you're setting up an equation. So way over here on the right, and when I say way over here, you don't know sometimes how many conversion ratios you're going to need, so you want to leave a lot of space. So over here, we have some number of moles, and you write the unit of measure moles and the compound then in parentheses. So we have some number, I just represent that by a blank underline, of moles of H2S. And what we're starting with is 3.5 moles, so I'm going to put that way over here. You really don't need this much space, but sometimes you don't know. 3.5 moles of... AG2S. Okay? And it's going to be a simple single conversion here. So I'm going to put the time sign. I'm going to write a big box. That represents a conversion ratio that I'm going to need. So the conversion ratios you can get from this, I'll write them up here, is there's one mole of H2S for every one mole of AG2S. Again, unit of measure and then substance in parentheses. Or, it's equally valid to say it the other way around. One mole of A 
G2S for every one mole of H2S. So now you've got two conversion ratios and you got to choose which one you're going to put in the box. Well, this one's pretty easy. You got, you got moles of AG2S on the top, so you need moles of AG2S on the bottom to cancel. And you need moles of H2S on the top so that your last man standing is moles of H2S. That ends up over here. So that's the conversion factor you're going to choose. So it's one mole of H2S over one mole of AG2S. And mole of AG2S cancels with mole of AG2S. As I said, the last man standing is mole of H2S, so that comes over here. So now your equation is set up properly, so you can just do the math. And since it's a one-to-one -one relationship, it's logical. 3.5 times 1 divided by 1 is 3.5. So what this is saying up here is that however many moles of this I have, I got the same number. If it's 1, it's 1. If it's 3.5, it's 3.5. If it's 42.7, it's 42.7. So it's going to be a one-to-one -one relationship. So that's your answer right there. Okay, next one, B. Okay, B jumps to a more difficult problem right away, to the most difficult. And this one's got three conversion. Let's see why. First of all, I'm going to use this table up here. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to reuse this table up here. And it says, how many grams of silver will be produced by 4.67 grams of hydrogen, of hydrogen gas? Okay, I'm going to change that question. It's how many grams of silver will produce. Because the production is going from silver from the left to the right. So we'll produce that. Okay, so I'm going to put will produce. Because the production is going from left to right. And the silver's on the left and the hydrogen's on the right. So how many grams of silver will produce 4.67 grams of H2? So way over here on the right, we have grams of silver that we're looking for. And way over here on the left, and you're going to have to put it way over here because you're going to have several conversion, uh, conversions. It's going to be 4.67. This is what you're starting with. That's the number that the problem gives you to work with. And that's grams of H2, of hydrogen gas. Okay, so let's figure out where these go in the boxes up there. Grams of silver, so here's silver right here, and grams, the grams box is here, and that's what we're trying to find. So I'm going to put a question mark there. Uh, grams of H2, 4.67 grams of H2. So I come over to H2, and I come down to the grams row right here, and that's going to be 4.67. Okay, so how do I get from here to here? I can't go straight over. There's no way to do that. So what I have to do is I have to go inside the chemical equation to convert into moles. So the chemical equation speaks in the language of moles. And I use this conversion factor to do it. I then go from this many moles of hydrogen, some number of moles of hydrogen, over to some number of moles of silver. And that's a moles to moles conversion. That's the second conversion. Finally, I make the third conversion. I go from moles of silver back out to grams of silver, which is what the question is asking me for. And I use this molar mass conversion right here to translate from this to this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first conversion is over here, and we need to get rid of grams. So we, got two, we have two conversion ratios. One mole of H2 over 2.02 grams of H2, or 2.02 grams of H2 over one mole of H2. So we need grams of H2 to cancel out. So that means that grams of H2 is going to have to go on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and draw draw my box. I'll go ahead and draw all three boxes. We, we don't have to draw the boxes. It's just to give you a visual. here Because we're going to need three conversion ratios to get to our final answer. So we said we need the one over here that has grams on the bottom. So it's 2.02 grams of H2, okay, and it's one mole of H2 on the top. And you can go ahead and cancel as you go along. Grams of H2 cancels with grams of H2. 
All right, next, we have one mole of H2 for every two moles of Ag. So we have two conversion ratios we can form between these two. There's two moles of Ag over one mole of H2, or there's one mole of H2 over two moles of Ag. So which one of those two do we want to use? Well, we have moles of H2 on the top, and we need it to cancel out because it's not in our final answer, so we need it to go away. So that means we're going to put it on the bottom. So it, we're going to choose the one with moles of H2 on the bottom. And that means we're going to have um, two moles of Ag on the top. So that takes care of our conversion going across here. Finally, we need one last conversion to get us back out into our world. So um, we're going to use the molar mass here. So we can say one mole of Ag over 107.9 grams of Ag, or 107.9 grams of Ag over one mole of Ag. So which one are we going to pick? Well, two ways you can look at it. We need moles of Ag to cancel out, so we have to have moles of Ag on the bottom. Or the other way you can look at it is we need our last man standing up here on the top to be grams of Ag. So that's the one we're going to use. We're going to say 107.9 grams of Ag for every one mole of Ag. And moles of Ag here cancels with moles of Ag here. And as I said, the last man standing is grams of Ag. So now you have your units and your numbers lined up. So it's 4.67 times 1 times 2 times 107.9 divided by 1, divided by 1, divided by 2.02. Okay, so I did the calculation on that, and what I get is 498.9. If you disagree, let me know in class tomorrow. But I multiplied everything on the top and divided by everything on the bottom, and that's how I got that. Okay, let's move on to C. How many grams of H2S is required to produce 8.3 grams of Ag2S? So try to do this one. It's a gram, another grams to grams, just like the one up above it. See if you can set this one up. It's going to be three conversions. So let's go ahead and identify what we're dealing with. How many grams of H2S? So it's asking you for this question mark. Let me erase this one over here from the last problem. So the question mark is grams of H2S. It can be produced from 6.52 grams of Ag. That's actually. Hmm. I'm going to say I'm going to change that one. Sorry, I didn't catch this wording. How many? Uh, oh no, no. I'm sorry. From eight. I'm sorry. Wrong one. From produce from 8.3 grams of Ag is required to produce 8.3 grams of Ag2s. Let me read that again. How many grams of H2s? That's right here. Is required to produce 8.3 grams of Ag2s. That's this here. So we want to. We want to produce this much. So even though we're going, the reaction is going this way, our problem is going backwards. It's going in the other direction. We're starting here, and we're moving back here to figure out this number right here. So first we have to do is take this. We have to use the, the appropriate um, conversion ratio from this to get us moles of Ag2S. Then we go from moles of Ag2S to moles of H2S. And that's our second conversion. And our third is to come out using this molar mass relationship to come out and give us the number of grams of H2S. So let's write our equation. Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can do this one by yourself. You can use the one right above as a, um, as a model. Okay, if you paused, we're back. So here we go. On this side, our question mark, what we're trying to find is grams of h 2s and over here way over on the left is what we start with is 8.3 grams of ag2s and i'm see i did i said way over on the left i didn't do it way over on the left because i can tell i'm going to run out of space the way i write so i'm going to stick it way over here Okay, so it's going to be uh, 8.3. It's okay, it's better to have too much space than not enough. AG2S. 
So now I'm going to have three conversions. So just, again, draw my mythical little boxes here. You don't have to. This represents my three conversion ratios that I'm going to need. There we go. And we're going to fill in those boxes. So the first one is going from here to here using this. So I have one mole of AG2S over 247.87 grams of AG2S, or I have 247.87 grams of AG2S over one mole of AG2S. So which one of those is going to make grams of AG2S cancel out? Well, it's got to be the one with, with grams of AG2S on the bottom. So it's going to be 247.87 grams of AG2S. So that means the mole is going to be on the top. One mole of AG2S. And their grams of AG2S cancels over here with grams of AG2S. Now the next one is, it's a moles to moles. It's We're inside the chemical equation now. We have to go from one mole of AG2S to one mole of H2S. Well, that's a simple one-to-one -one relationship. But which one goes on top? Well, moles of AG2S is on the top here, so it has to go on the bottom here to cancel. So it's one mole and on top is going to be one mole of H2S. So mole of AG2S here cancels with mole of AG2S here. And we've got one more to go. So, okay, so, um, so we've got moles of H2S. We're going to end up in grams of H2S. So we have this conversion factor. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, one mole of H2S over 34.09 grams of H2S, or 34.09 grams of H2S over one mole of H2S. So which one are we going to choose? Well, we have moles of H2S on the top. That means we need moles of H2S on the bottom. You also know that you have to end up with grams of H2S, so that's got to go on the top. So either way that you reason that one out is fine. So it's one mole of h 2s and up on top is 107.9 grams of H2S. So moles of H2S cancels with moles of H2S. The last man standing is grams of H2S. And so now we know we have our units lined up. So what we're going to do is 8.3 times 1 times 1 times 107.9 divided by 1 divided by 1, divided by 247.87. Okay, and that leaves me with uh, what I get is 3.61. I'm not worrying about significant figures right here. I want you to just focus on the stoichiometry. I'm getting 3.61 grams of H2S as my final answer. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I'm going to race my um, numbers up here and and my question marks, because you can use this, use this as a tool to visually see what's going on, what the path is to get to your answer. Okay, okay here we go. So D, how many moles of H2 can be produced um, from, it should be produced from 6.52 grams of AG? All right, so what are we dealing with up here? So it's how many moles of H2. So here's H2, and this is the moles row up here. So we're not going down to grams this time. So we're going to put a question mark right there. Okay, draw that over. So there's your question mark right there. And then it says it's produced from 6.52 grams of AG. So here's AG, and it's grams, so we have to come down here. So it's 6.52. 5, 2 grams of AG. All right, so now what's our path to get from here to there? Well, again, you got to go inside the chemical reaction to here using this molar mass conversion, and then it's moles to moles. You go from here to here. And at that point, you're done. You don't have to come back out again. It didn't ask you to do that. It said give you the moles of H2. 
So it's only a two-step conversion this time. So let's go ahead and set up the equation. We're looking for some number way over here on the right of moles of H2. And way over here on the left, we're starting off with 6.52 grams of silver. And it's going to take two conversions. We saw that visually on the, uh, on the diagram up there. Okay, so let's see how this works. So the first is our molar mass conversion for silver. There's one mole of silver over 107.9 grams of silver, or there's 107.9 grams of silver over one mole of silver. Which one do we want? We want the one with grams of silver on the bottom so that this will cancel out. So it's going to be 107.9 grams of AG. That means we have the one mole on the top. It's always one mole in a molar mass conversion. So we can do our first cancel of grams of AG and grams of AG. Now we just need one more conversion. Okay, uh, We have moles of AG up here. We're going from AG, moles of AG to moles of H2. We have moles of AG on the top. So that means we need uh, moles of AG on the bottom. But how many? Well, you've got, you either have, you, you have two conversion ratios. Two moles of AG over one mole of H2, or one mole of H2 over two moles of HG, HG, AG. So which one is it going to be? Well, we said that the, we said the moles of AG have to go on the bottom, so they'll cancel. But it's not one mole this time, it's two moles, okay? That's what this is telling us. So two moles of AG, and here is one mole of H2. So moles of AG here cancels with moles of AG here. Last man standing is moles of H2. So we have everything lined up, so now we can do the math. 6.52 times 1 times 1 divided by 2 divided by 107.9. Okay, and so for this one, when I multiply all the top and divide by the bottom, I get 0 0.030 moles of hydrogen gas. Okay, so we are back. I'm trying to squeeze everything on. It's, it looks like that's not going to work too well here. So I'll do E. You can, see the, you can see the diagram up on the top. So this one is going from grams to moles. So it's how many grams of H2 gas will be produced by 5.67 moles of silver. So over here is my unknown. It's grams of H2. And over on the left is 5.67 moles of silver. How many conversions is that going to be? Well, let's go up to our diagram. That's what helps us to determine that. So we start with 5.67 moles of HG. And let me erase all of the previous work up here. Okay, so it's 5.67 moles of Hg. So here's H, here's Ag, excuse me, Ag. So 5.67 moles goes there. And what we're trying to get to is grams of H2. So here's H2, and the grams row is down here, so that's where our question mark goes. That's what we're trying to find. So we start here, and we get, get to here. How do we do that? We go from moles of AG to moles of H2 inside of the equation, and now we come out to back to our world using the molar mass conversion here from moles of H2 to grams of H2. So that's going to be a two conversion problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw my boxes. Okay. So first we're doing the moles to moles, from moles of, of AG to moles of H2. So there's two ratios you can get. There's two moles of AG for over one mole of H2. There's one mole of H2 over two moles of HG. Well, which one do we want to cancel? We want the moles of AG down here to cancel. So that's going to go on the bottom. So it's two moles 
of Ag, and it's one mole of H2. Okay, and finally our last conversion has got to have grams of H2 on the top, and it's got to make moles of H2 cancel out. So you can look at either way, but let's go to where we are. So this is our molar mass conversion. So there's one mole of H2 over 2.02 grams of H2, or there's 2.02 grams of H2 over one mole of H2. So which one do you want on top and bottom? Well, moles of H2 has to cancel, so we have to have moles of H2 down here to cancel. And our last man standing has to be grams of H2, so it's 2.02 grams of H2 is going to go up on the top. All right, so moles of Ag over here, moles of Ag cancel, moles of H2 cancel, moles of H2 cancel, and there's your last last unit standing to go over here. So now we can do the do the math. Okay, so what we're going to do is multiply 5.67 times 1 times 2.02 divided by 1 divided by 2. And when we do that, we get 5.7, and I'm going to round it up to 3 grams of H2. All right, let's finish this one off. The last question is asking us for how many moles of H2S are needed to produce 6.8 grams of Ag2S. So let's erase work from the previous problem. Okay, so how many moles of H2S? So here's moles of H2S. So it's asking how many, so that's a question mark, are needed to produce 6.8 grams of AG2S. So here's AG2S, and grams are down here on the grams row, so that's going to be 6.8. Okay, so let me pull this back just for a moment. So what we need to do is get from here, you, this is your starting point, the number you're given. You have to use your molar mass to get into moles of AG2S. And then you use a mole-to-mole -mole conversion to get you over to moles of H2S, and that's what the final answer is supposed to be. Okay, so that's a two-conversion problem. So let me lower this down then. We don't need that diagram anymore. So moles of H2S. And you start off with 6.8 grams of h uh, AG2S. I'll put it way over here. Leave yourself plenty of space. And it's going to be two conversions. Okay. So, what do we have? We're going... Come back down here. We're going into AG2S using the molar mass. So it's one mole of AG2S over 247.87 grams of AG2S, or it's 247.87 grams of AG2S over one mole of AG2S. Which one do we want on the bottom to cancel out? The grams. So it's going to be one mole on the top. And it's going to be 247. 0.87 grams of AG2S. Okay, 8 grams of AG2S there cancels. Sorry, I'm off screen. Grams of AG2S there cancels. Grams of AG2S here. So that was my ratio if you didn't see me write that. And finally, now we have to go from moles of AG2S to moles of H2S. So what's the relationship? Well, it's an easy one. It's one to one. One to one. So that's an easy one to do. So now which one on top? Well, we need moles of AG2S on the bottom. So one mole AG2S. The tense is getting a little dull here. And up on the top is one mole of H2S which is my last man standing over here. So the eight, one mole of AG2S right there, one mole of AG2S there, and now we run our numbers, and it's 6.8 times 1 times 1 divided by 1, divided by 247.87.
So let's go ahead and do that. And I get 0 0.027. And that's your final answer. There. Okay. I hopefully this is becoming a little bit clearer, okay? And by the end of this problem set, I'm hoping that you really have this concept mastered. So um, what I'm going to do is go on and work the next problem. And then I'm going to leave it for you to do the last two, and we'll do them together in class, okay? I'll call some of you up to the board. I'm sure that thrills you all. So that was number one. This is number two. I shall probably do three in all. So here we go. So let's look at what the, what we're dealing with here. Okay, so we have a um, balanced chemical reaction of ethylene with oxygen to form CO2 and H2O. Combustion reaction, we've talked about that briefly. We'll get more into reactions next week. This time I'm leaving it for you to compute the molar mass. Okay, so you can do that quick and dirty up here on the top. So let's do a few of those, okay? So you have 2 for carbon, you have 2 times 12.01 equals 24.02 grams. And for hydrogen, you have 4. So for H, you have 4 times 1.01, .01, which equals 4. 0.04 grams of hydrogen and now you add those two together and you get 28.06 grams for the entire molecule so that's the number that's going to go right here I didn't leave a lot of space for it but just write small 28.06 grams for this molecule right here okay O2 Again, we're not interested in 302s. Don't get confused there. We're interested in one mole. That's a single O2. And we know that oxygen, there's two oxygens times 16 is the molar mass. I think you all know that by now, so that's 32. So you're for a single mole, not for three moles. The three comes in later when we work the problem. So that's going to give you 16, excuse me, 32. Okay, let's keep on chugging here. So carbon, we have one carbon and carbon dioxide, and that's times 12.01. We have oxygen, we have two oxygens, and that's times 16. So this is going to give you 12.01. This is going to give you <coughs> 32, and you add those together. <coughs> Excuse me. You get 44. 0.01 grams for carbon dioxide. So you put that right here. One mole is 44.01 grams. Okay, and finally, you do water the same way. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. That's going to give us 18.02 grams per mole. So you got all your molar mass conversion. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. How many moles of H2O will be produced by 3 moles of C2H4? So we're asking over here on the right. First of all, let's identify where we are. So how many moles of H2O? So moles is this line and H2O is here. So that's your question mark. And you start with 3 moles um, of C2H4. So you're just going to put a 3 right here. So it's simply a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. So over here on the right, we're going to put moles of H2O. And way over here on the left, you're only going to need one conversion, but sometimes you don't know that. So you're going to put three moles of C2H4. And it is just one conversion because it's moles to moles. So I'm going to put a box here. Okay, so now we can we have two relationships here. We have one mole, let's put a one in front of this. We have one mole of C2H4 over two moles of H2O, or two moles of H2O over one mole of C2H4. 
Which one do we want on the, on the bottom? Well, we need to make moles of C2H4 cancel. So we want this one on the bottom. So it's one mole of C2H4. And over here it's two moles of H2O. Okay, notice something. Don't get confused by the 3. The 3 is here. You've already taken care of that. All you're interested in is what's that relationship. It's a 2 to 1 relationship. Okay, no matter how many moles we decided we want to work with, that's what we put here. But that relationship is 2 to 1. So the 3 is already down here. The relationship is 2 to 1, and there it is right there. So the moles of C2H4 cancels moles of C2H4. We end up with moles of water on the top. That's what we want. So 3 times 2 is 6, and that's our answer. Okay, that's an easy one. Now let's move on. Let me erase this first. Okay, don't erase your molar masses, okay? That's you're going to use those throughout the problem. Okay, B, how many grams of CO2 will be produced by 3.67 grams of C2H4? So, we're looking for grams of CO2, uh, CO2. So here's CO2, and down here on this line is grams, so we're, we want to know how many. That's our question mark. Is produced by 3.67 grams of C2H4. So here's C2H4, there's grams. So we start off with 3.67 here. So we need to get from here, where what we know, to here, what we don't know. So how are we going to have to get there? We're going to have to go up through the equation and back down. So you're going to use your molar mass for C2H4 to give you the moles of C2H4. Then the relationship between moles of C2H4 and moles of CO2. And then from moles of CO2, using this molar mass conversion, back down to give you your final answer. So let's go ahead and do it. Hopefully these are becoming kind of natural for you. So it's some number of grams of CO2, always, always write unit of measure in compound or substance. Over on the left, it's way over because we know it's going to be three boxes, 3.67 grams of C2H4 times box number one, box number two, and box number three. All right, so box number one, you start, this is our starting place. Okay, so we either have to have one mole of C2H4 over 28.6 grams of C2H4, or 28.6 grams of C2H4 over one mole of C2H4. Which one is going to make the cancellation work? The answer is grams of C2H4 has to be on the bottom. So we have 28.06. That means the moles on the top. It's always one mole. It's a molar mass measure of one mole. Okay, so grams cancels with grams. Okay, next we have to do a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. So you're either going to have one mole of C2H4 over two moles of H2O or two moles of H2O over one mole of C2H4, which is going to make the cancellation work. You need mole of C2H4 on the bottom. So it's one mole of C2H4, and on the top it's two moles of H2O. Excuse me, of, H, uh, of CO2. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong problem. Let's try it again. So it's still two moles of CO2, it's just not H2O. My bad. So it's two moles of, of CO2. Doesn't change anything, so I'm sorry if I was confusing there. Okay, so moles of C2H4 cancels moles of C2H4. And you have two moles of CO2 at the top. 
Now, finally, we need to get moles of CO2 to cancel and grams of CO2 to appear in our final answer up on top. So here's our molar mass conversion. It's one mole of CO2 over 44.01 grams of CO2 or 44.01 grams of CO2 over one mole of CO2. So the one that's going to make the moles cancel is putting the moles on the bottom. So it's one mole. Don't get confused. It's not two moles of CO2, okay? It's the molar mass. It's this number. Okay, it's one mole of CO2, and up on top it's 44.01 grams of CO2. So moles of CO2, moles of CO2, we end up with grams of CO2 at the end. So now we're going to multiply 3.67 times 1 times 2 times 44.01 divided by 1 divided by 1 divided by 28.06. Okay, and when we do this, what I get is 11.5, I'm going to write it down here, grams of CO2 is what you get out of that reaction. Okay? All right, next one. Next one's also a grams to grams. Go ahead and try to do that on your own. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to erase my numbers up here, my question marks. So it's saying how many grams of O2? So let's find O2. It's right here, and grams is down here. So put your question mark there. It's how many. It's required to produce 8.3 grams of CO2. So here it is, 8.3 grams of CO2. So again, I want to make this point again. Even though the reaction is going from left to right, it's going from here to here, our problem is going in the other direction. We're starting with a number, and we're working our way back to this number. So don't get confused by which way the math problem goes or which way the chemical reaction goes. <clears throat> we start off with something we want, and we have to figure out how much of this stuff we need to get that. Okay, so we go backwards to do that. Okay, so here we go. So it's some number of grams of O2, so I'm going to put that way over on the right. It's going to be a three conversion problem because it's grams to grams. And way over on the left, I'm going to put 8.3 grams of CO2. And again, the three conversions are this. You start with 8.3, use your molar mass conversion for carbon dioxide to get moles of carbon dioxide. Then you relate moles of carbon dioxide to moles of oxygen. And then you use your molar mass conversion for oxygen to get from moles of oxygen back out to grams of oxygen. So that's three different steps. So I'm going to draw boxes. You do it if you want to. And here we go. So we're starting here with this molar mass conversion. One mole of CO2 over 44.01 grams of CO2 or... 44.01 grams of CO2 over one mole of CO2. Which one's going to make grams of CO2 cancel? The one that puts grams on the bottom. So 44.01 grams of CO2. And up on top then you just simply by default have one mole of CO2. And grams CO2 cancels grams CO2. Okay, next, it's moles of CO2 related to moles of oxygen. So watch this one. This one's got some numbers in front of it that are not ones. So we have moles of CO2 on the top. So in order to get it to cancel, we need moles of CO2. How many moles of CO2? It's two moles of CO2. So we put two moles of CO2 on the bottom. And on the top, since we're trying to get to oxygen, it's moles of O2. So we put three moles of O2 on the top. And moles of CO2 cancels with moles of CO2. Finally, we got to get moles of O2 to cancel and end up with grams of O2. So we use our molar mass conversion for, for O2. So it's one mole of O2 over 32 grams of O2, or 32 grams of O2 over one mole of O2. Which one of those is going to make the moles of O2 cancel? It's the one with moles of O2 on the bottom. So don't get confused. You're now dealing with this number of moles, not this number of moles. Okay? So it's one mole. It's just simply your molar mass conversion. One mole of O2, and on top we have 
32 grams of O2. So moles of O2 cancels moles of O2. And now we can do our math. Everything lines up. So 8.3 times 1 times 3 times 32 divided by 1 divided by 2 divided by 44.01. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay, when I run those numbers to a couple places after the decimal, again, I'm not thinking sig figs right now. I just want to get you through this concept, one concept at a time, then we'll tie all that stuff together later. I get 9.05 grams of O2 is what you would get, um, or what you would need in that reaction to end up with 8.3 grams of carbon dioxide. That's what that's telling you. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Expand my screen a little bit here. I think we can do that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to erase the numbers I wrote. Again, you can use this diagram as kind of a tool to map out your, your strategy for doing the problem. So, how many moles of O2? So, first of all, let's find that. So, moles and O2 is here, and that's what we're trying to find out how many. So, question mark. Are required to make 12.52 grams of H2O. So, here's H2O. Grams are down here on this row, so it's 12.52. Okay, so what's our path to get from here to here? We do the molar mass conversion to get moles of H2O, and then we do a moles to moles conversion to get from moles of H2O to moles of O2. So it's a two conversion process. So over here, we're going to put moles of O2. And over here, we're going to put grams of H2O, 12.52. And it's two conversions. We just said that. So we're going to use two boxes. Okay. So over here, first we start off by moving into the chemical equation. So it's one mole of H2O over 18.02 grams of H2O, or it's 18.02 grams of H2O over one mole of H2O. So which one do we want on the bottom for the cancellation? We want the 18.02 grams of H2O. So that cancels with grams of H2O. That means the one mole has to be on the top. Okay. Next, we have a moles-to-moles -moles conversion. Two moles of H2O over three moles of O2, or three moles of O2 over two moles of H2O. Which one do we want? We need to have moles of H2O cancel, so that has to go on the bottom. So, so it's two moles of H2O. Two moles of H2O. And on the top has to be the other one. Three moles of O2. And that is the unit of measure we want to end up with at the end of the problem. So cancel moles of H2O and moles of H2O. So now everything's set up. We can do our math. So 12.52 times 1 times 3 divided by 2 divided by 18.02. Okay, and when I run those numbers, I end up with 1.04 moles of oxygen. So 1.04 moles of oxygen um, is what you would need to produce 12.52 grams of H2O. And that assumes that you have a sufficient amount of C2H4 to mix with it. If you run out of C2H4, you won't end up with that much. That's called a limiting reactant. We'll talk about that very soon, but not today. Okie dokes. Let's keep going. Let me erase my numbers up here from that problem. And let's read the next one. So I'm going to have to shuffle back and forth. Let's see if I can make this work a little better. Okay. Okay, next question. This one's asking, how many grams of O2 will be produced by five? Um, by 5.67 moles of H2O. 
Okay, that one looks like it's a problem I asked earlier that was not worded quite right. So how many mole grams of O2 will produce five point six seven moles of H2O because the O2 is a reactant and the H2O is a product. So it, the O2 is going to be producing H2O, not the other way around. Okay, so anyway, we got that solved, corrected. So what we're looking for is grams of O2. So come over here. Grams of O2. And over here we have 5.67 moles of H2O. So we come way over here. Okay, and that's going to be a two conversion problem. Well, let's see why, because I didn't, we didn't actually diagram it, so let's do that. So we're trying to get to grams of H2O. So we come over here. There's a, uh, grams, excuse me, grams of O2. So there's O2 and there's grams down there. So that's our question mark. That's what we're trying to find. We're starting off with 5.67 moles of H2O. So here's H2O and the moles line is up here. So that's 5.67. So our first step is to go from moles to moles, from H2O to O2, and then from moles out to grams using the molar mass conversion for oxygen to get back out to grams of oxygen. So that's a two-step or a two-conversion um, problem. So let's go ahead and do that. So first it's moles to moles. So it's a relationship between two moles of H2O over three moles of O2 or three moles of O2 over two moles of H2O. Which one do we want to use? Well, we have moles of H2O. we got to get that to cancel, so we're going to put that one on the bottom. So it's 2 moles of H2O. And it's 3 moles on the top of O2. Okay, so moles of H2O cancels with moles of H2O. I'm off the screen. I'm sorry. I'm way off the screen. I'm close. So I put the three moles of O2 on the top, the two moles of H2O on the bottom. So moles of H2O cancels with moles of H2O. Now we've got to get moles of O2 to cancel and grams of O2 to appear. So our molar mass is one mole of O2 over 32 grams of O2 or 32 grams of O2 over one mole of O2. We need moles of O2 down here to cancel. So that means it has to go on the bottom. So this is a molar mass conversion, so it's always one mole. And it's the grams of O2, which is 32. All right, so now we cancel moles of O2 with moles of O2, and the last man standing is grams of O2, which is what we want. So now we can do the math. 5.67 times 3 times 32 divided by 1 divided by 2. So go ahead and run those numbers. Okay, and I come out with about 276.5 grams of O2. So again, what is that saying? It's saying you need 276.5 grams of O2 in order to produce 5.67 moles of H2O. Okay, we're going to do one more, and I'm going to call it a night. We'll do the rest in class. Um, so let's do H and move on. So how many moles of C2H4 are needed to produce 6.8 grams of CO2? So I'm going to come up here, erase all my old stuff up here. And again, the problem says how many moles of C2H4? So the question mark is moles of C2H4. How many? are needed to produce 6.8 grams of CO2. So I come to CO2 and I go down to the grams row, and that's 6.8. Okay, so what's my path to get from what I started with to what I'm trying to find? I do a molar mass conversion of CO2 to get moles of CO2, and then I do moles of CO2 to moles of C2H4, and that will give me my answer. Okay, so let's go down here. And we're going to say some number 
moles of C2H4. And we start with 6.8 grams of CO2. And it's a two conversion problem. We just saw that. Okay, so what do we do? First we need the molar mass conversion for CO2. So we have grams of CO2 that we need to cancel. So we have one mole CO2 over 44.01 grams of CO2 or 44.01 grams of CO2 over one mole of CO2. Which one do we want on the bottom so the grams cancel out? That's right, 44.01 grams CO2. On top, we have one mole of CO2. Okay, so the grams of CO2 here cancel the grams of CO2 there. Now we're ready to do the mole-to-mole -mole conversion from CO2 to C2H4. So which one do we want on the bottom? We need moles of CO2 on the bottom. So it's either one mole of C2H4 over two moles of CO2 or two moles of CO2 over one mole of C2H4. So we just said we want the moles of CO2 on the bottom. So it's 2 CO2, 2 moles CO2. And on the top, it's 1 mole of C2H4. Okay, so we got moles of CO2, moles of CO2. And so everything cancels except moles of C2H4, which is what our final answer is. So now we multiply 6.8 times 1 times 1 divided by 2 divided by 44.01. Okay, and the number I get for that is uh, 0 0.077. So that's how many moles of C2H4 it would take to produce 6.8 grams of CO2. Again, this is just a lot of mathematical manipulation. Once you get used to this method, these problems won't seem so hard. It just takes practice. That's why I gave you a lot of them. I'm done for the night. Uh, this thing's at an hour, this, this tape. So we have three more to go in class tomorrow. We're going to do that instead of lab because this is way more important than any lab I would give you at this point. You've really got to master these molar mass conversions and this stoichiometry. It is the heart and soul of chemistry. So... Um, at the risk of incurring your wrath for not giving you a lab tomorrow, we're going to work in groups largely and, and finish these off and maybe do a couple other things. Okay, so have a good evening. We'll see you in class on Friday. Um, everything's going to be okay at Hoover High School, all right? You take care.